Blog Talk Radio. It's Crown Talk Time with Burgundy. I'm your host, Burgundy Mallory. First and foremost, I would like to say happy late Father's Day to my father, other fathers, or father figures, and to our Heavenly Father above. Tonight on the show, we will discuss Dear Any Dreamer, Education, Diversity, and Confidence with the incredible 16-year-old Amani Johnson, your 2015 Georgia Teen America's U.S. Miss. Remember, if you did miss Episode 4 with Miss American Co-Ed 2015, Erica Tucker, you can listen to her at our website, www.crowntalkwithdyrgu.wix.com slash crowntalk, or visit www.blogtalkradio.com slash crowntalkwithburgundy. In addition, last week on Crown Talk, I did read the names of and congratulated our Leadership and Global Leadership Award recipients. You can visit our website to view our May and June Global Leadership Award recipients, and congratulations again. And now, introducing our guest for the week. As a unique 16-year-old, Imani Johnson can be found using her creative mind through writing and designing clothes. Currently, she is enrolled in design classes, studying sewing and drawing techniques. Imani enjoys going to church, traveling, spending time with her family and friends, shopping, and social networking, especially on Pinterest. After successfully graduating from high school, Ms. Johnson plans to invest in her future by attending college to receive a degree in communications and business management and to study law. As a lover of public speaking and enthusiastic for diversity and a lover for social justice, Imani would like to work and serve as a public figure to bring together different ethnicities and to create a brighter future for our world. Through her years, she wishes to carry on all that she does to empower and create a brighter future through today's youth. Imani Johnson is the current Miss Georgia teen affiliated under the America's U.S. Miss pageant organization. To read more about Imani's bio, please visit our Facebook under Burgundy Mallory. And introducing our girl with the dream, Miss Imani Johnson. How are you, Imani? I am fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Well, we're very excited to have you today. Um, are you getting ready for nationals going on? I definitely am. I'm almost finished packing. My paperwork is finished. I'm so excited to be with all my sister queens. I'm just really looking forward to nationals. Well, that's wonderful, and we cannot wait to hear how you do at nationals, and we're definitely going to be following you here at the Crown Talk. So we're going to read something from Columbus, Ohio. She has said, hi, Imani. How are your parents being supportive towards you being a title holder? Ever since the beginning of the time, my parents have supported me in everything and every way possible. Whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I burst into the room with an idea because I sleep and I think about competition and I just get an idea and I'm like, Mom, I have to tell you something. And they're like, they listen to me. But the main factor that we have in our relationship is great communication and great trust that we have. That's something you always need to have with your parents no matter how old you are. Indeed. Um, I think trust is very important with your parents. And you have wonderful parents that have supported you through all of your endeavors and have brought you up wonderfully, and I think that they are wonderful parents, and I indeed agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that children should learn about diversity at a young age? Yes, I definitely do. That's something that will stay with a child within your changing years. It's something that will enable them to make friends and be able to travel and be able to just experience different cultures. That's something my parents instilled in me at a very young age. I remember when I was five years old, and we would take road trips all across the country. And instead of listening to actual radio with music, we listened to talk shows and the news. That way, at a young age, I could understand what was going on in my world. 
a lot of kids nowadays, they don't even know what's going on in their own backyards, and that enables me to tell them what's going on. So I'm so thankful to my parents for doing that. I'm on the same page with you there. I'm going to read a quote that I thought was a milestone and great to read um, by Maya Angelou. Quote, it is time for parents to teach young people early on that in diversity there is beauty and there is strength, end quote. And I believe that's important that parents do teach their kids that there is beauty and strength within um, be, being culturally diverse within their culture. And I think as, as title holders, we can go around and promote diversity within the realm of our community. So, Imani, who is your role model and why? Nina DeVolori, Miss America 2014. She is the epitome of diversity. She is the reason why I created my school's first ever diversity club, the Circles of Unity. That's where we go in our community and we take part in different cultural things like festivals and fairs and we try different foods. And we're really devoted to putting an end to stereotypes and racial slurs and bullying throughout our school and our community. Nina DeVolori, I believe she represents diversity so well and she handled her service handled herself very well, even when she was being racially slurred throughout her reign as Miss America. So definitely Nina DeVolori. Yeah, she was definitely a wonderful Miss USA. And being from New York, I think they have had some wonderful Miss Americas because they're from New York, and they do have diverse in their pageant system, definitely. So I certainly agree with you on her being a wonderful pageant title holder. So education, diversity, confidence. What inspired you to create your platform and why? Ever since I was a little girl, I've always had a passion for working with kids, whether it was the Boys and Girls Club, my church's youth group, or the Awana program, which is what I volunteer weekly for. I would be listening to the kids, and I would see the light in their eyes, and they would talk about their dreams and their goals and their ambitions. And it would just amaze me. And then I would go home and I would look on my computer. I do a lot of research and I read a lot of articles. And I would see the news talking about how the generation is failing at doing anything and that we're not going to go very far. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this is so wrong. I spend all day with these kids talking about their dreams and their goals. And I cannot let this negativity consume them. I have to be that positive for them. And education, diversity, and confidence, those are the three main things I feel can change the generation and allow us to continue going on the right path towards success. Definitely. And you are definitely a wonderful role model because you engage your smartness in education by helping others and teaching them that education is important. And then you're definitely a diverse individual, and that's a wonderful aspect of you. And then you definitely have confidence adding on to that. So you are a wonderful role model to be teaching education, diversity, and confidence, and especially at a young age. And I think that's wonderful for our youth today, that they have someone that can speak their lingo, can speak their language and stuff and say, yes, education is very important, diversity is very important, and confidence. And I think those are three aspects of our youth and just of our society today that's important. Well, we're going to take a little break right now, and we're going to play the Crown Talk Game of the Week. Are you ready for this game? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to ask you who your favorite Disney character is, and please tell us why, because the listeners want to know. So first we're going to start off with Cinderella or Belle. I would have to say Cinderella because I can quote that movie word for word, forwards and backwards. And plus, when I was five years old, I dressed up like Cinderella for Halloween, and through every single day I put on my Cinderella costume. I think Cinderella is wonderful. She's one of my favorite characters in Disney Princess. But I have kind of come to like Belle more because I've learned more about the story because she overcame obstacles with the beast being really mean, and she changed him. And I think that goes back to us being title holders. We can help change others to look at life in a different aspect. For example, going back to your platform, we can help them 
love and change to learn and to love education and diversity and learn how to be confident in their self. I okay, absolutely agree with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Princess Tiana or Pocahontas? I would definitely have to say Princess Tiana. I think she represents diversity so well, and I've heard so many little girls when they've seen Princess Tiana in the movies, I've seen it like five times in theaters, and I heard this little girl say to her mom, Mommy, she looks like me, and that just melted my heart and allowed me to realize symbol of duty to these young women, including myself. So definitely Princess Tiana. Oh, I think you look like Princess Tiana, in my opinion. Listeners, you can go to our websites or our social medias and see your mommy on there. I think she looks just like her, and she definitely has the characteristics of Princess Tiana as being a caring person and being a thoughtful individual. So she, I think you, if you try it out for Disney right now, you definitely get the role of Princess Tiana. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, Mary Poppins or Nanny McVie? I would definitely have to say Mary Poppins because it takes me back to when I was in fifth grade in music class and we'd be singing Mary Poppins songs. Mary Poppins is a wonderful movie. I love that movie. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> um, Rapunzel or Ariel? I would definitely have to say Ariel because that brings back a lot of childhood memories that I have with my family, especially my sister. She loves Ariel. She would watch it almost every single day. <laughs> I think Ariel, for young girls today, they, and just like in general, I feel like little girls love Ariel. You always start off with Ariel. That's who they love the most. If you take a poll, that's pretty much who they all love, Ariel. Um, now, the next one is a little controversy towards a lot of people because these two princesses were the first two princesses in Disney. Sleeping Beauty or Snow White? That is a hard one. I think I'd have to say Sleeping Beauty because that's the first Disney movie I've ever seen, and that's what made me love princesses. So definitely Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, it, it really is a good movie. I really liked it. My favorite, though, was Snow White, and that's only because it showed a bond between the Seven Dwarfs and Snow White and how when the Seven Dwarfs, she came in and she helped the Seven Dwarfs, and then in return, they didn't lead her astray, and they didn't leave her out in the woods. They went and got help for her and found the prince to come and be with her. So I think it's a wonderful way, Snow White, it shows a bond between friendships and teaches people how to be friends. So we're going to get back on some questions, Imani, because we have some views that want to know some things about you. Okay, so, so from Staten Island, New York, what events as Miss Georgia team have you enjoyed so far? Just last Saturday, I participated in the prostate cancer walk slash run in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And prostate cancer is something that has such a special place in my heart. It's something my great-grandfather and my grandfather both passed away from. And just this year, my dad is six years cancer-free. So participating in this walk and run with my grandfather's name written across my heart and my dad's name on my back saying survivor, it really meant a lot to me. And plus my organization, Conquerors for Cure, we were able to raise $500 for different organizations that celebrate prostate cancer awareness. Well, congratulate to your, congratulations to your dad for being a survivor because that's a big accomplishment. And also, is there anything that our Crown Talk listeners or I can do to help you reach your potential of raising money? Right now, we're in the process of getting our website made up so you can donate. So eventually, when I get that made up, I will post it on my social media, and the link will be in my bio, so then people can start donating money. Well, while you're on that subject, could you please tell us more about how ladies can get involved into the America's U.S. Myth or get in touch with these as Miss Georgia teen um, and to, like, help you with growing, growing as an individual and promoting your platform? Most definitely. You can reach me at my social media page. My Instagram is at Miss Georgia Team. And if you would like to become a part of America's U.S. Miss, all you have to do is either send me a message on Instagram 
on Facebook, it's the same thing, at Miss Georgia Teen. Or you can contact americasusmiss.com and go in and fill out your applications or your state and my state director or whatever state you're from, and it'll get right back to you. It's so quick. Well, that's good. And everybody, you heard her that you can always ask her any questions. So feel free to contact Imani. Our next question is from Richmond, Virginia. What store would you recommend for evening gowns in Georgia? Hmm, I would definitely have to say either CC's or Brom or Lasting Impressions Formal Wear. CC's, I love Miss Candy. She's helped me over the years with all of my gowns. There is one gown in particular. My name is Sparkle, and this dress explains exactly why. I had my eyes on this dress for about three months, and she kept it there for me. People tried it on, and then she was like, oh, I think you like the other one better. Let's do this one. And I ended up getting my <laughs> gown, still have it, and every time I put it on, it makes me think about her. So definitely Cece's of Rome or Lasting Impressions. That is a beautiful dress shop. I've walked in that store, and I've literally cried because it's so pretty inside. And you will never leave empty-handed if you go to Lasting Impressions Formal Wear. I'm definitely going to have to look at CC of Rome. I know Lasting Impressions, they have wonderful dresses. I've seen them and on many multiple girls, and I know that they're sponsoring the pageants that I will be going to this in this July. So I know they have wonderful, but I'm definitely going to have to go look at CC of Rome's and check them out. Well, since we're talking about sparkles and dresses and things, your friends call you Sparkle. Could you please elaborate more on why they call you Sparkle? <laughs> Ever since seventh grade, I got a pair of Ugg boots that were covered in sequins, and I have about three pairs of them now. And I would always wear them with my outfits because they went with everything. So eventually people started calling me Sparkle. Uh, I think that's so cute. These daughters, Sparkly boots. Yes, I still have them. All of my clothes have spark. Everything has to have sparkle in it to me. It's even my Instagram name on my personal account, so it stays with me. Well, you're my type of girl. I love sparkles too. <laughs> um, how can you teach? How can you teach the youth of today to stop bullying? Personally, for me, I believe it starts within your home. Your parents have to sit down and talk to you and see what's going on in your schools? Because often people bully and they don't even understand that they're bullying. Sometimes we think we're being funny when we say a joke towards someone. And it may be funny for that second, but really deep down inside, that's affecting that kid. And within me, I share bullying awareness through my platform. And I've been able to talk to kids and share things and do different activities with them, like having two kids get up and they say a little skit, something that may seem funny. But in reality, it's bullying. So it teaches them the difference between being funny and being a bully. Absolutely. I think skits are a great way to show people how bullying looks and how it is received. And it doesn't look pretty to do that. And I think us title holders and the youth of today and the people that are in their old years, they have the power and the effect to help change bullying because I know cyberbullying has really come up now in society and in this day and age that it's really bad and there's nothing that our police stations and different people can do, but we can stop it by showing them skits and going on websites and showing them how this is not right to do. So I think there are many ways that we can teach our youth of today how bullying looks and how to stop it and how to be on the other side and to stop the bullying. So there are many resources that they can do. That's why we have internet now. So listeners, if you know of anybody that's bullying or that you feel that you're being bullied, don't hesitate to go and tell a parent. And if you don't feel comfortable parent, telling a parent, tell somebody else. You have to at least tell somebody because that person can go get help and we, they can stop the bullying. And if you do see someone else bullying, bullying someone else, then you should take the initiative to go and stop that bully or go tell somebody if you're not so comfortable getting in that situation. So that can stop. And there are many resources on what on the internet. You can go to www.bullying, www.cyberbullying.com. There are many resources. There's Google. 
Well, well, we have another question for you. Education is extremely important to you. What is your favorite subject in school? Definitely Spanish. It combines everything that I love, reading, writing, public speaking, and sometimes even modeling. There's never a day in Spanish class where I do not laugh. And plus, it enables me to travel all abroad. When I was five years old, my parents bought me a globe and I mapped out all the places I wanted to go to. My parents said, well, Imani, when you learn how to speak all these languages, then we can go to these countries. And now, since I'm learning Spanish, my parents and I are thinking of taking a trip to Spain, and I definitely want to do it before I go off to college. Well, I think that's great that you're, that you're learning Spanish and that you know Spanish, because that's really big in the U.S. now, um, having Spanish, being able to speak Spanish, so you can go out when you're either reading to the kids or talking to a kid. You can speak their language, and it's mainly, most of it is Spanish, and many of our industries in the USA when you're telling in um, high school and going to college and becoming the young adult and having your own business, they need you to know Spanish. So I think that's wonderful that you are learning Spanish and you know it. So hopefully you'll get to go overseas and check that off your bucket list. Most definitely. <laughs> I read in your bio that you want to learn more about the fashion industry. How can you implement the fashion industry with the pageant industry since they're kind of similar? That's something I would honestly love to do. I would love to be able to help girls feel even more confident on stage in a gown designed by me or even just helping them pick out a gown. That's something I would love to continue to do on my fashion blogs that I have. Oh, well, what is your fashion blog so that our listeners can go look at it and follow you? It is under my Pinterest. My Pinterest account is sparklediva53, and it's called Sparkle Diva's Closet, and I post pictures of my outfits on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, we are all going to have to go check it out. And what is it called again? Sparkle Diva 53. That's my account and my board is called Sparkle Diva's Closet. Well, we are definitely going to have to check it out. And listeners, you, hope, you heard her go look at it because I know she has some wonderful fashion tips for everybody and has a wonderful fashion sense. And it can definitely help you with your pageants just going out um, to do different appearances and et cetera. Well, Imani, it has come to the end of your interview with us today, and we're so happy that we've had you on tonight. I am so honored to be a part of the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you are so welcome, and we really do look forward to hearing about how Nationals went, so you have to definitely tell everybody how it went and tell us, how, tell Crown Talk how it went. We are very excited for you because it's, what, two weeks away? Yes, two weeks. Well, we are very excited and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Well, you have a wonderful night. You do the same. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And everybody, that was your 2015 Ms. Georgia Teen, Imani Johnson. If you are interested in becoming a, becoming a contestant at America's U.S. Miss, please visit their website, www.americasusmiss.com. America's U U.S. Miss will be held in Clearwater Beach, Florida, on July, 12, on July 6th through the 12th of 2015. And again, good luck to Imani as she adventures the wonderful experience of the America's U.S. This national stage and week. There are some other national pageants that are going on during this during the week and weekend. June twenty fourth through the twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen, Miss Reigning America. June twenty fifth to the twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen, Miss Junior Teen America and Miss Teen America. June twenty sixth through the twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen, Miss Black US Ambassador. To learn more about these pageants, you can participate in, or you can go watch their pageants, national, states, or local pageants, please visit the Pageant Center, pageantcenter.com. The Pageant Center is an incredible pageant resource center for those that are 
in the pageant industry or want to become a part of the pageant industry or et cetera. This is a great place to start, everyone. I would really love going to see what pageants are, are coming about or going to be during the week I am either in that state or wanting to go to that national. Moreover, Crown Talk is casting individuals with aspiration, goals, drive, and determination within the realm of their communities that would like to participate on Crown Talk podcast. If you would like to participate, please email us at Crown Talk with Burgundy. B Y R G U N D Y at gmail dot com with your name, title, or a title, i. e. makeup artist, pageant coach, hairstylist, etc. A fun a fun photo, headshot, and bio. We look forward to hearing from you. Well listeners, we have reached the end of Crown Talk with Burgundy tonight. Remember, our mission is to empower success in our listeners. Listeners, don't forget to listen on July 6, 2015. We have International Junior Miss Hawaii preteen Cassidy Quinn and her mother, Kate Quinn. I'm so excited because she's one of my pageant sisters and we're going to nationals together. Thank you again to Imani Johnson, Miss Georgia Tain. We wish you the love, we wish you the best, the love and luck as you get ready for nationals. And remember to follow her and look at her, um, her blog, which is under Sparkle Diva 53. So make sure that you look at hers. We will post it up everywhere so you all can see what her blog is about and look at her fashion sense and maybe you can take some tips from her. Don't forget to follow our social media sites. Twitter at Crown Talk with BY. Instagram at Crown Talk with Burgundy. Facebook, Burgundy Mallory. I hope you all have enjoyed the show tonight. Remember, you're never too young to be a role model.